Okay, we're back in the shop. We are gonna try to assemble those heads with the shims and we're cutting the block finally. We got the crankshaft back from the balancer. Looks like we're actually on a fairly decent freaking level. It's just a little, kind of a little uneven all over the freaking place. See it kind of cut everywhere. So we'll drop it down again. I mean, the more we do here, the more we're given piston protrusion. And with this block was in the high 20s to begin with. So we can be a little liberal with cutting the block. Let's cut just a, I mean, we're gonna make it clean. That's what we're doing. So let's cut another one. All right, this is 2000s off. It's probably not far-fetched. We're gonna get about four out of it, probably. Cause it's still not clean. Now who knows how much you can account to actually cleaning the block when somebody does a head gasket job and they clean and they clean out all the staining then it actually it'll take material out so you know the fact it's i mean it's not warped it's just not flat that's really what we're dealing with here okay let's do another one yeah does not look bad we'll do one more just to give it a good cleanup that'll be probably done spots here uh, just barely that you can see we'll do a zero cut and I think that's freaking done let's do it again okay that is the passenger side bank with a block surfaced and done let's get it flipped over now this is the other side this be the driver's side bank touched off see up here I'm underneath that ledge right there yep touched off there slightly very slightly touched off a little here um, let's see we got any more I think we might be uh, right there you can see a little so that tells us that we're real freaking close got us there Got us quite a bit here. We might be a fraction high on this side, but I did touch off here, a touch. So if it is, it's very minuscule. We got quite a bit taken off there. Quite a bit taken off there and quite a bit taken off here. So I think we're there and I'm just gonna, let's go down, let's do another one. Yeah, buddy, look at that. That's after just one more. Yep, good level. Good level, let's. Go on down and clean it up. That's two thousands. I think two, two, yeah, two thousands. So it's probably gonna be about four by the time it's done, probably again. Uh, we will do one more on this one. Yeah, we'll do one more on it just to get it clean because we have plenty of room. So we're gonna do that. I'm calling that done. We'll do a zero pass on it. We still got a couple of little bitty lines, but nothing extreme ahead and let it go like that in the center that might get taken off with a zero cut other than that it looks pretty freaking good we're going with it just raise over the top real quick and we're done with the surfacer for the whole job wow that's awesome yeah here we are Pressure of them at 30%. So we're done. This is 3,000 out. See the ridge right there. Pretty good one. I don't even see the bottom of it. So, needless to say, we could have 10. Rough, rough cutting it right now, use the diamond to get it within probably three, three, two and a half to three thousandths, and then I'll put finish in and finish it. That's the plan. All right, that's our first initial cut. Let me set it in here, one-handed. We still have six thousandths to cut. So I'm gonna cut another probably three out 
and then maybe I'll set it to four. I'll set it to about four, and then we'll uh, go to finish. But right now I'm stair stepping up for the first holes. That way it'll it will mimic that hole on the rest of them, as long as I get it set up right. Okay, we're doing another one. Now you could switch, but since I'm using diamonds and coolant, that block is not hot. I don't have to switch from one hole to the other. So I'm within two thousandths with rough diamonds. Get over there, I'll grab the smooth ones here in just a minute. Once we get all these cut, and then I'll cut the last two thousandths out with the smooth diamonds, give it a little plateau cut, and then we'll brush it, chamfer the bores. This sucker is about to go on the stand right there. She's asking for it. Still going. We're on the second side now. It's about done. Just cleaning them all up. There you go. We're done. All right, it's another day. The heads are right over there, way over there. Done. Assembled and done. The block is completely machined. We are now done with the equipment. We started covering up some of it. And the block is ready under here. Something. So I'm. Um, Let's uncover it and start final cleaning. Brush the bores, brush the oil galleys. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, just me and me over here hanging out in the corner. We're final clean. That's probably spent about an hour and a half, two hours cleaning on this thing. And now we're about ready to start actually putting parts in. We're gonna start with the oil galley plugs. Let's get that done. And then what? A lot of times I get going. It's oil galley plugs, then, then camshaft. Well, piston cooling jets, then camshaft. And bearings, crankshaft, bed plate. Let's go. All right, there's the crankshaft. I haven't oiled them or I put louver plate on it. Got it balanced. Bob Morton, got the crank all ready, cleaned up, piston cooling jets in, camshaft in, oil galleys, all that stuff. Now we're ready for the crankshaft. Let's get the crankshaft set in there and we're taking parts off the shelf. We're getting consolidation, that's what we're doing. It is that time I put one little dot on and I thought I might show you guys before we get started at this process. Okay, here's the truck is i mean <laughs> you could say in progress right now we got the front cover the rear cover the lifter soaking in oil the high pressure pump pump cover all that stuff is ready to go we got anaerobic on here spray your uh, surface prep on this and then i put some ta29 there and just let that co-mingle in on the on the t-joints of the anaerobic and that uh, surface prep. You already put it up. I already put it up. But the surface prep makes that anaerobic turn into hard plastic. Yeah, use that stuff. Don't not use that. Don't be a dumbass. But say bye bye mains. Say bye bye front cover, surface, rear cover, surface, and lifter bores. Next time you see us, it should be done. All right, we got Felpro's front cover gasket, and they are actually getting worse and worse. So if you do not want to put any sealants on your front cover at all, honestly, I would probably say if you don't want to put sealant on your front cover, then don't do your front cover. Okay, I'm uh, pretty big on these T-joints, all these T-joints on this truck. We, uh, when we put the bed plate on, we're gonna do all the T-joints, front cover, the rear cover, and the high pressure pump. I don't really want to question like whether or not the top key joint or whatever, if there's a, well, let's just do everything we can to try to not have oil leaks. And so now uh, I got the lifters in, but that's not tight. So when, see that I can move it? Cause I can easily torque it after I put the pump on. Put the pump on right now. We should have our own service manual. 
basically. We, I think we would just make a service manual, a new one for a new procedure. Because this is how you should build a short block right here. There's no rods in it because we don't have time to put all the rods in because all the sealant's going to dry us. Like me sitting here talking to you. The sealant's drying right now. I need to hurry the hell up. But we don't want to go shoving all the rods in while we've got this T-joint drying with no sealant anywhere. That's horrible. That's just pain in the ass. So now we're going to put the pump in, cover. And once we put the pump cover on, all the sealant is dry. We can breathe. We can relax for a minute and then work on getting the, the rotating assembly done. Yeah, after we torque the lifters. Yeah. All right, as soon as Julie finds the bolts, we can bolt down the pump, the pump cover. And from here, it's time to flip it back upside down and uh, put the rods and pistons in. We've got them over there. They're all set out. They've already been weight mashed. They're good to go. Look, she's got the bolts. And they are painted and ready to go. How nice. Okay, I opted to, rather than surface the top, because I know Frank would have went ahead and went with surfacing it, I opted to go ahead and seal the pump cover. I doubt we're going to do the oil cooler. I doubt it. But I, just a little bit. Look, like when I say a little, that's torqued down. That's done. That has sealing on it. Yeah, that's all I want. Just a freaking... I got a little carried away right there, didn't I? Just a little bit. That'd be all right, though. And then out here. And then all the way along the back, I always do that. Do the whole back. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, holy crap. I can spin that like that. And I have the pump in. It's trying to pump. That's so nice, though. I mean, there's nowhere to grab it, but you can still spin it easy. Spin it even easier with the pump going. Hey, whatever. So take a file and file all your rings, just the ends and check in gaps. And I, th I really do feel we need to touch off on the corners because I think a lot of lines are caused in cylinder walls by uh, ring ends that are not deburred well enough. And then it's just gonna ride up and down and cause lines in the cylinder until it burns off the burr. So let's give it a little fighting chance and file it off a little bit. And then we'll check ring in gap. I do it to all of them, actually. We've got them in the, uh, keep them in these containers. It works really good for storing it. Yeah. You hear all this, feel that? The little edge right here, that top edge right there. I wanna get that, I wanna knock a little bit off the corners. We'll go around them, make sure that they they don't, like this, this is new. Here we go. Yeah, that's freaking gritty. There's a hard corner on there. I could just be cutting the corner down off of it, but I, not like that. It's a, uh, when they grind it, there is a little burr on there. And some of these, you can really feel it. You can tell that you're not gonna burr down. So we definitely have to do this. It's a pain in the ass too, it takes a long time to just sit back and take a break and break time now. We're gonna go ahead and check the, the rings. I've already filed all of these. I have not filed the oil control. I do go ahead and file those a little bit too. I'll touch off on those. All these have already been done. <laughs> I've already touched off on them. And we'll go ahead and check the end gap and then take the ring out and where where all these rings are they're going in that specific cylinder so i'll take them out of there and set them over here on the table for the the piston so that we'll i mean it's you know general practice is you should check each ring in the cylinder it's going on with the piston right yeah well all the other ones checked out good but the oil control is supposed to be nine to nineteen thousand this is a factory and nine it's just, focus, it's just almost, I mean, it's there, kind of. Oh, I guess, here, let me straighten it. Actually, I'm gonna go to a different one. Go to this one right here. Oh, it's so tight. I don't know if I like that being that tight. This is a little tight. It just needs touched off a little bit, just to open it up. <sighs> I got uh, two, about two and a half thousandths cylinder clearance. 
is what I set it up at. So, you know, they obviously wanted a bigger cylinder clearance. It calls for like one point, one and a half to three and a half is what the number, what it calls for. So, you know. Uh, let's get this little guy out and just touch off a real quick second on the oil control. Dang it. Mm. Like cavemen, that's how we're doing this. Cavemen engines. Mm.